Hi, welcome to this brand new part, part 20 of AWS Solution Architect Professional. We are looking at questions linked with data encryption, Redis, and elasticity. Please do not forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Please do not forget to visit this playlist. It has so many videos on Solution Architect Professional, okay? Tons of questions there. Please focus on the concepts. Only concepts can help you clear the certification. Now let's jump into the questions. So you have an Amazon S3 and you need to encrypt whatever is coming in and going out. That means whenever we talk about encryption, we are trying to protect that data. Like you see in encryption, there are two kinds, server side, client side. So what it says is even, even if you make this public accidentally, the data must be safeguarded. For example, you have a locker and you have a security card. Even if the security card falters, he goes out for a tea or he takes a nap. Somebody can get in, but they would still need the key which they don't have. And that is how your locker is still safeguarded. So we need to choose three options, three answers. Let us look at option A. What it says is you deny you deny if you don't see this secure transport so we will immediately look at this documentation so you see this this is a part of encryption in transit so this is what is important when you check for secure transport what we are trying to do is we are trying to enforce encryption in transit thumb rule remember this please how does this work if the secure transport value is true then you send the request through HTTPS, okay, to comply S3 SSL requests, only rule will be utilized. You create a bucket policy that explicitly denies access when the request meets the condition secure transport false. Okay, so this is exactly what our option is saying here. So this is one of the answers. Congratulations, we arrived at at least one of the answers. Now we have to choose or we have to scan through and identify two more now let us look at option b it says it talks about using kms using cmk client managed keys using kms okay and enable server side encryption so this is a documentation and evidence that this option also looks correct because server side encryption is used for this purpose you can pause this video here and read this paragraph carefully to understand the concept around this so in a nutshell what it is doing is s3 would encrypt your data at object level as it writes to the disks so that your data is encrypted at rest so what we are talking here is encryption at rest and we are enabling that through server side encryption and then this also looks correct let's look at option three that is c it says ensure ensure you are you are putting a deny statement for put object actions if your amz server side encryption condition is not met so this is also a part of protecting your data using server side encryption how it works is you can pause this video read this section carefully so whenever we try to upload objects if 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 there is a policy it will what it will do is it will look for the object unless it has the this server side encryption header if this header is missing it will not allow you to upload the object so i showed you in the documentation this is the reality this is how it works and this is the json around it how it works they are denying the encryption and i mean they are, they are denying they put this is the effect they are denying it and uh, what are they denying they are denying put and what are they looking for they are looking for amg server side encryption that is the aes 256 encryption so always remember all data at rest data at rest encryption remember at rest not transit this happens through aes 256 protocol this is the thumb rule and encryption in transit in transit you make this note it happens through tls protocol these are the two important thumb rules so we got our third answer as well so it was in sequence a b and c are the right answers let's look at d e and f 
see d okay so d is wrong because d is only talking about enabling the server side encryption but will it use hms and etc if you compare this with option b here b is more clear b tells you they will make use of kms and so on that's why d is wrong let's look at e now you might say this is very similar to c almost same but what is the difference the difference is this here they are using 256 here they are using kms always remember kms is the right option because that is the condition that is being checked see one thing you should remember you can use both 256 or kms the reason kms is right here please remember please focus on this this is the difference the reason we are using kms here is because we are using key management service as a overall you know when we choose three answers we are using kms here key management service in that case we should use kms and not ae256 okay but ae256 is also used in other scenarios okay so that is a difference let's look at option f it says turn on so option d is totally oh sorry option f is totally wrong there is no use of aws config see it is primarily used to record and evaluate configurations that means you use a certain set of configuration there are suppose 12 parameters you have configured in some system some server and anyone changes that it will you know record and evaluate at who changed it why it changed it it is a bet best decision or not and so on config is not used for this scenario for encryption so this is totally wrong so hence we would lock these three answers these are my final answers and remember this thumb rule encryption in transit happens through tls protocol encryption at rest happens through aes 256 protocol or you can also use kms keys you can use server side encryption for encryption at rest for encryption in transit check for this value and if this is false the encryption won't happen the data would move let us jump into this question this is a simple question is this true or false redis is supported by elastic cache uh, we know for sure redis is supported you see this there is a documentation it is in memory data store it is supported but life is not so easy so let us go through it the first one says a says it is true it is supported and elastic cache supports redis key store but with limited functionalities so there is no limitation okay believe me there is no limitation redis was an existing product and aws has integrated that into its own cloud environment and it has integrated with no limitations so a is wrong and c is correct because there are no limitations and false elastic cache does not support this is wrong because we saw in the documentation right aws supports it and d is also wrong because we saw in the documentation that AWS supports Redis through Elastic Cache. This would be my final answer. One more question. Now, people might say, hey, do you get such easy questions? Isn't professional certification all about firing rockets? It's all about rocket science. You will get some of these simpler questions as well always remember that question set is a mixed bag okay it will not always be linked with rocket science they will also ask you easy stuff like how to make a burger so what does elasticity mean we all know elasticity auto scaling and those kind of features we discussed but let's check here so the option a says it is ability to scale up the computer resources which is which is fantastic with minimal friction and down with latency so down with latency is wrong okay why will you add that in your auto scaling that means when the scale down happens it happens with latency which is not correct now option b this is correct because it says it's the ability to scale up and down easily with minimal friction this looks correct this is my answer but let's look at c and d let us look at both the option c says ability to provision cloud computing resources in expectation of future demand so two months down the line i need to add 12 12 compute resources so i will provision that now itself because i'm stupid right i'll start spending money from today i'm stupid so hence c is wrong anything to do with stupidity is wrong and d says the 
ability to recover from business continuity events. What is business continuity? Amazon.com was up. It was running. Suddenly, some idiot, they hacked the system and bought Amazon.com down for three hours. And then you are trying to bring it up so that business can run because in three hours, so many people wanted to buy something. They may have gone to Flipkart.com and other websites, Mintra or so on. So scale up. Elasticity has nothing to do with business continuity events. It will not help you there. Elasticity will only help you to provision computer resources. If Amazon.com, suppose today 100 people have logged in, tomorrow immediately a spike happens and 100,000 people log in. It should still work. The computer resources should be available, scaled up automatically to meet the demand. It will not help you if, if some idiot brings the system down. It will not help you with that. And that person, that idiot can be in your company or it can be an external player trying to, it's a bad player trying to hack your system. There are a lot of people in your own company who do not have the know-how and they somehow do something which takes the database down or the server down and so on. So common sense is the only treatment for stupidity and C and D are, uh, they both require stupidity to choose these two as an answers. B is correct, okay. Hit the subscribe button. It takes a lot of effort to put in these content for you. Subscription tells me that you like the content and you want to see more. See, there is this whole playlist, okay. Just scan through, there are so many questions, so many videos for AWS Solution Architect Professional. Now, many people say professional certifications are not for me. I'm not working at that level. I choose to live a life of mediocrity. If you choose to live a life of mediocrity, do not appear for professional certifications. But if you want to achieve excellence, then give this certification. This brings us to the end of part 20 of AWS Solution Architect Professional. We discussed questions linked with these three topics. Please stay tuned for many more such parts. It, and I sometimes use the word common sense and stupidity because that is the way if you go through my videos, when such similar questions comes in, you will remember my words that this is a common sense, lack of common sense or stupidity and that option is not correct. And hence, I'm using these words. I'm not an abusive person. So see you in the next part.